Welcome to the final episode of the fall semester of Leatherneck Insider. I'm Caden Strenz. And I'm Jalen Short. We're kicking it off with this week's Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week, Drew Cisse. Leatherneck Insider reporter Austin Holzenagel spoke with him. Hello everyone, my name is Austin Holzenagel and I'm here with this week's Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week, Drew Cisse. First off, Drew, congrats on winning this award. Tell me about your explosive start to the season that has you currently third in the country in rebounds. I'm just playing with a lot of confidence right now. Uh, my coaches put a lot of confidence in me. My mom's put a lot of confidence in me. And I just feel like I've been kind of like a diamond in the rough for so long, so it feels like I'm finally getting my chance to shine. So I'm just I'm taking what comes to me and then hoping for the best pretty much. Yeah, you and the team have been super fun to watch. It's also been a block party. The team is currently third in the nation in blocks as well, and you currently lead the team in blocks. Tell, has, was defense a focus coming into, uh, coming into the season? Yeah, uh, for me, I've always been a player that wants the, my opponent to hate me, basically. I want them to hate playing against me. I want them, when they see me on the scouting report, to be like, oh, brother, we got to play this guy. So that was always a big thing for me. And then we have Coach Heike whose main emphasis has been defense, and he's been drilling us since the summer on locking in on our principles, and everyone's pretty much bought into it. So I feel like we're like seeing the fruits of our labor right now. Awesome. And what can us Leatherneck fans expect from not only you, but from this team as the season goes on? It's a lot of hard work, a lot of highlights. I feel like we're going to keep getting better. We're going to keep – I feel like we're kind of like in like a little bit of – we're still getting to know each other because we got like – seven or eight new guys, so we're just going to keep gelling, keep being cohesive, and then you're going to see a show, honestly, movie time. Well, we can't wait to see how it pans out. Obviously looking to bounce back from that South Dakota loss. We wish you and your team the best. Thank you. And for Leatherneck Insider, I'm Austin Holznagel. Thank you, Austin, and best of luck to Cissé and the team the rest of the season. The volleyball team had many accomplishments this season including first-team All-OVC player Kiana Cruz and their first trip to the conference tournament since 2013. I spoke with head coach Dale Starr and outside hitter Kiana Cruz about these accomplishments. The WAU volleyball team made the conference tournament for the first time in 10 years. Head coach Dale Starr shares his thoughts on the accomplishment. It means a lot to this program. It means a lot into our um, it, it adds a lot into our rebuilding of this program and, and you know, our, our plan to get this program back to where we think it should be. Um, so it, was, it, it, was, it meant a lot to this program and meant a lot to the girls and, um, you know, just got done with our exit meetings and, and everybody's excited for the spring, everybody's excited for next year. Um, you know, only losing two seniors off of this year's team moving forward, you know, we're, we're looking for bigger and better things even next year. Kiana Cruz made the first team all-conference in the Ohio Valley Conference. She shares her thoughts on this honor. Um, it was super exciting because I was, that was one of my goals and I was able to accomplish that this year. Um, and my teammates were really proud of me and just like pushing myself in general um, helped make that happen. So that was a pretty good accomplishment for me. Head coach Dale Starr looks for a jump in the standings next season. Our, ne our next step is to have a winning season next year and be in the top top four in the conference. That's that's going to be our, our goal starting in January when we get back here in the spring. That's going to be our, our goal is to have a winning season overall, uh, be over 500 and and be in the top four in the conference. Um, you know, going from seven to four, I think is very attainable. Um, I think winning 10 plus matches in the in the uh, conference uh, schedule is, is very attainable. And I think winning 15 plus matches in the in the regular season is very attainable. So I, you know, that'll that'll be our goals for next year. And if we surpass those, then that'll just all be icing on the cake. Reporting for Leatherneck Insider, I'm Caden Strenz. It sure will be exciting to see the the leaps forward for the team next season. Staying with volleyball, Carly Winslow sat down and shared some thoughts about this season and how she feels going into 2024. Leatherneck Insider reporter Calvin Darnell has more. Wrapping up the year for WIU Volleyball, Captain Carly Wenzel reflects on her third year as a Leatherneck and what she will bring into the new year. Um, just being a leader on the court, like like on and off the court, just taking control in the back row, um, just helping other teammates and also them helping me get better too. Being a junior, Wenzel has spent all three years with the Leathernecks and has improved vastly every season. Wenzel gives us all a bit of insight into how she has grown so much on and off the court. 
Um, I feel like Dale really helped me out with that one too, just to get some confidence back in me from my freshman year um, and showing me like I am good enough to play and stuff. So I feel like that really helped me out and also just my teammates just improving me, improving like my skill levels and my want to and my passion for the sport every single day. After making the conference tournament for the first time in almost 10 years, it seems as though Wenzel and company are primed for a run next year. Their second year in the OVC and third year under Dale Starr is sure to be a memorable one. Oh, 100%. I expect us to, because we were ranked seventh in the tournament, I expect us to be in top five because we know how the other teams play and what the OVC is like just from this year. And I feel like with that experience, we can grow and learn from that. For Leatherneck Insider, I'm Calvin Darno. Thank you, Calvin. All of us at Leatherneck Insider congratulate the volleyball team on their successful season. The WIU women's basketball team has accomplished a lot this past week. Leatherneck Insider reporter Ben Palanca has more. WIU women's basketball had made a few accomplishments as head coach J.D. Gavina earned his 300th win and is one game closer to becoming the winniest women's basketball head coach at Western Illinois. Here's head coach J.D. Garvina on his accomplishments. You know, in one way it's just a number. I mean, what's really the difference between 268 and 300? But um, I think when you reach a milestone like that, you do. You get to think about all, like, the former players you've had that have been a part of those wins, your former staff, um, and just kind of the, the loyalty. The loyalty, I think, that, that I've had to this program in Western Illinois and the loyalty that, that they've had as a university, as an administration, as a fan base to me. Freshman Reagan McCowan has scored over 100 points in seven games and scored in double digits eight out of the nine games so far this season. McCowan explains her accomplishments. Yeah, I think I definitely attest to uh, my team, my whole team. I mean, I definitely could not do this without them. Uh, I just was telling them the other day, I was like, I could not do this without you guys passing me the ball, supporting me, hyping me up, always on the bench over there. They're always, they always hype me up so much. They're always like, they can guard you, they can guard you. Like, and I just think it's those little things that, that really build up my confidence that, that shows out on the court. Gavina is very pleased with the team's performance thus far, but their schedule only gets tougher. And right now I feel like we're playing well. Um, I, you know, almost every game I feel like we've played, you know, three good quarters here, you know, 36 good minutes out of 40. And so to be playing well, I think gives us some confidence moving forward. But it is going to get tougher when you're battling every single night these last two games against Summit League teams. And when you get into conference, um, it gets, it's just going to get a little tougher and we're going to see how we reacted. I really liked how we reacted against St. Thomas uh, when things got tough. You know, they built a seven or nine point lead and we, and we answered that. And I thought that was important um, to, to what we're trying to do. Well, the Night Insider, I'm Ben Palanca. Thank you, Ben. The Leathernecks are back in action tomorrow at Kansas City at 2 p.m. For the entire schedule, visit GoLeathernecks.com. Coming up after the break, we will talk about men's basketball and the start to their season. Stay tuned. It's not W. It's W. 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 That's what I've been stressing out about the most so far. Is saying W because I know it's something you're gonna say right now. Yeah, we've been here. They said they're like, we're waiting on. What are we waiting for? They haven't said it. I'll tell them we're ready to go. We can start. Bye. Hello, everyone. I am Will Thomas. Welcome to this week's edition of Leatherneck Insider. We welcome you back into Salee Hall. The WIU men's basketball team started their season with a record of 3-6 and six with conference play coming up. And there are some bright spots to recognize. The Leathernecks rank second in the country with 6.8 block shots per game and first in total blocks. Senior center Drew Cisse is third in the NCAA in total rebounds with 98. The Leathernecks will take on the Green Bay Phoenix today at 6 p.m. as they look to continue to rely on the team's great defense to get the win. Good luck, Leathernecks. We now send it over to Luke Little to talk about the college football playoff standings. 
Take it away, Luke. Well, guys, the 2023 and 2024 college playoffs are set, or as Shannon Sharp called it, the Alabama Invitational. The four teams to make it in are Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama. There's been a lot of controversy already over the selected teams, like whether Alabama should be in or Florida State. All four teams that made the playoffs won their respective conference, along with Florida State, who won the ACC. The last four college football championships have been won by an SEC school. Georgia, who won the last two, Alabama, and LSU, who won it in 2019. Now here's where the true controversy of this year comes from. Never in the history of college football playoffs, in the history of the selection committee, has an undefeated Power 5 champion ever been left out of the playoffs. Not once. But this year, Florida State didn't make it in. Now maybe you're saying, Luke, it's not the four most deserving teams, it's the four best teams in the nation. That's why Alabama made it in. Let's like take a look at the sixth ranked Georgia Bulldogs. They were ranked number one all season long, have one loss all season, which was to Alabama by three points in the SEC championship game. And you're trying to tell me they're not a top four team in the nation? Look, no matter how you paint the picture, Florida State got left out of a very well-deserved spot. Nonetheless, Alabama is in. The semifinal games are scheduled for January 1st at 5 p.m. and 8.45 p.m. for game two. The current favorites to win the national championship is number one ranked Michigan. Next season, the playoffs will be expanding to 12 teams instead of four. The arguments on who should and shouldn't be in will still continue no matter what happens. What about you guys? Do you think Florida State or Alabama should have been put in? Here's what I'll say. Going into championship weekend, Florida State was ranked four. And you think you win, you keep your spot. But that wasn't the case. I understand that Alabama beat Red Hot Georgia, one of the, be the best team in the country. Um, and then also Texas beat Oklahoma State. I mean, I, I get it, but the committee should have kept Florida State at five going into the championship weekend. What do you think? Well, I think the committee got it right just because of, like Luke alluded to, it's the best four teams. You're not going to leave Alabama out. Alabama is one of the most known programs in the country no. as far as football. So you're not going to leave them out. A, a Nick Saban coach team Everyone knows that that's going to sell more tickets, that's going to bring the notoriety to the college football playoffs, so I think they got it right. Coming up after the break, we will discuss men's golf and their new additions to the program. We'll be right back. Your vision. My goal is to work at a top 100 television station as a reporter, anchor, and a producer. Our mission. Thanks to Western, I have a resume that would beat out most students from the top journalism schools in the country. This is Western Illinois University. I am a success story. I am a Leatherneck. The WIU men's golf team have signed three new recruits to the 2024 class. The three new additions are Owen Howe, Tegan Hull, and Maverick Schwab. Schwab enters this class with a 2A district championship, 16 tournament wins, and an all-conference low-scoring average. The second signing, Tegan Hull, comes to WIU with three state qualifiers, two all-state honors, and a three-time Missouri Golf Association Junior Tour Player of the Year. And the last and most decorated recruit, Owen Howe, enters Western as the Iowa 4A Player of the Year, individual state champion, and he led his team to a state title in 2022 and was elected to first team All-State. Schwab and Hull will finish out their senior year before coming to Western in the fall. And just before they arrive, the WIU men's team will be graduating three senior golfers in the spring. So these new additions will be starting their Leatherneck career right on time. The WIU women's golf team picks things back up with a trip to Arizona as they compete at Bowling Green University on February 13th and 14th. From there, they have a quick turnaround as they travel to compete in Montgomery, Alabama at the ASU Spring Classic. The team will take one more stop in Tampa to play in the Butler Intercollegiate before hosting the WIU Intercollegiate on April 5th and 6th. Rounding up the season, the team will travel to, to Nebraska to play in the Stampede Creek before finally competing in the Ohio Valley Conference meet in Mississippi on April 14th. The women's cross country team concluded their 2023 season with six total meets. The Western Illinois Alumni Invite, Redbird Invite, Joe Payne Invite, Bradley Pink Classic, OVC Championships, and the NCAA Midwest Regionals in Oklahoma. Madison Trevina led the way for the Leathernecks, finishing fourth overall. This year was the first season in the Ohio Valley Conference for the Leathernecks, and the women made the championship. Alana Cesar led the pace, beating 10 seconds off her personal best. 
A great season for the Leathernecks in their first year in the OVC. Cross Country will be back in action next fall. Coming up after the break, we will discuss Macomb High girls and boys basketball. Don't go anywhere. Western Illinois University. Our beginnings in 1902 focused on providing affordable teacher education training. We've changed with the times and excelled through the years. Today, Western is positioned for the next 100 years and beyond. Affordability of diverse academic programs, outstanding learning opportunities, and hands-on experiences provide excellent job placement for our graduates. This is Western, forever Western. Welcome back inside. Heading over to Macomb High, the boys basketball team is currently 6-0 to start their season. The Bombers have had some huge wins thus far in their season. Last Saturday, they took down Quincy Notre Dame 46-44 and then beat the preseason Class A number one ranked Illini Bluffs over Thanksgiving break 40-28. The Bombers head to Kiwani tonight to take on the Boilermakers at 6.30. Over on the ladies' side, the Bombers season is off to a rocky start as they sit at 3-7. The Lady Bombers took down Bushnell Prairie on Monday 47-6 and lost on Tuesday night to Quincy, 62-16. They will travel to Morden, Illinois to take on the 4-3 Potters this afternoon at 4.30. It's now time for another edition of Short Takes. Let's see what my partner Jalen Short has for us this week. Welcome everyone to another edition of Short Takes. I'm your host Jalen Short, and it's been a while, but we still have five topics to get to, so let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers. They've been playing great all season. They're the best team in football and it's not even close. But who is the biggest threat to them right now? I think it's the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, they've shown me way more defensively than the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles, they have a lot of questions to answer for the duration of this season. Now, let's move to talk about quarterbacks. Brock Purdy or Dak Prescott? Who's the MVP right now? In my opinion, it's definitely Brock Purdy. He's done more with that offense than Dak Prescott has with his offense. Brock Purdy has those weapons, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, that entire crew. They've been playing great all season, and he's the main reason why. Now let's move to the NBA and talk about the in-season tournament. Four teams left, Lakers, Bucks, Pelicans, Pacers. Who's going to win? I think the Bucks are going to win for sure because Giannis Antetokounmpo, Damian Lillard. That duo right there, they've been playing great all season. They're gelling at the right moment right now. And let's move to Tyrese Halliburton, Indiana Pacers guard. He's been playing great. He's going to be a top five point guard before the season is over. I think he may even earn an all-NBA nod this season. But we'll see because the Indiana Pacers aren't that good defensively. But he's definitely been playing great, and he deserves some credit. Now, let's move to talk about greatest of all time. In my opinion, I definitely think it's Michael Jordan, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to say LeBron James. Let us know who your personal GOAT is in the comment section below. But that's all the time we have for today, guys. I appreciate you guys listening. I'm Jalen Short, and I'll see you guys in the spring on Short Takes. Well, Caden. I want to ask you really quick, who do you think are the biggest threat to the 49ers this season? The simple answer is Eagles. Cowboys just can't beat San Francisco, and maybe, just maybe, Detroit might be able to threaten San Francisco in the playoffs. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. And you were talking about MVPs. Who do you think is the MVP favorite here in the NFL this season? I mean, you have to look at Brock Purdy, you have to look at Tyreek Hill as well, and maybe even throw Dak Prescott in there. He's been playing well as of late. But I think it definitely goes to Brock Purdy because his offensive weapons, he just does everything out there for the 49ers. Yeah, and I think Dak Prescott, he, uh, he's been dominating. Purdy's kind of like a system quarterback, but Dak's had some very impressive numbers this season against an easier schedule, but I guess you guys are to judge. Well, that's all the time we have for you here. We thank you for tuning in for another semester of Leatherneck Insider. We hope that you will tune in in the spring. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at InsiderWIU. For Leatherneck Insider, I'm Caden Strenz. And I'm Jalen Short. Have a great holiday season, Leathernecks. We'll see you in the spring. <laughs>